Hi friends, I'm Olga Kölsch and welcome to my studio. First of all, I would like to say how much I'm thankful for your great support and all your kindness you gave to my announcement of uh, my new coming book. That means a whole world to me. Thank you so much. For today's lesson, I prepared a lot of drilling exercises to master layering technique. Layering technique is the basement of painting transparent flowers, but also it can be used in many different genres. I hope you will enjoy this process. So let's start. I already pre-painted the first layer. Let's imagine, for example, it can be two leaves or just a petal of something. Firstly, we will try to make a gradient. I use some red color, in the red maybe, pretty liquid. And I apply the second layer. You see it's pretty bold. I apply it around the bottom area. I apply it around the bottom area carefully but quickly. And then once I finish, I wash my brush. I remove excess water with a paper towel and go along the edge and soften soften this border be uh, between first layer and second layer. I, um, you see <laughs> that I constantly go and wash my brush. It helps to create this clear, um, this clear idea of gradient, very soft one. And another important thing, when you work with your brush, you use, uh, you make a lot of these small um, moves and mixing and mixing and mixing and mixing and mixing and softening the edge, softening the edge all the time. And then you just leave it. You could correct maybe a little bit the shape. Let's see, like this. Your best friend is clean water and a paper towel right next to you. So now we got uh, a petal, for example, with a little bit thickness on the bottom, or a tulip, same, a little bit thicker on the bottom. Another way of layering, you wash your brush completely, you glaze the whole surface of the previous layer carefully, so, um, softly touching the previous layer. And while the paper is still wet, you add a little bit of color. It should be relatively bold, I would say. So it will mix nicely, noticeably around this area and let it all mix. Uh, this way creates a little bit softer, but maybe a slightly more unpredictable results. So um, just try and find what will be better for you. While the paper is still wet, you could keep adding and add in the bold part, the bold part. Of course, you can add this um, second layer all around. I'm just imagining that we are painting something relatively real. And I think that can work like this better. Set, uh, third one, of course. Now I imagine that this is a tulip, you know, these tulip buds when they are fresh and almost green. And now I will add second layer, but with another color. I wash my brush. In principle, you could use both of uh, these 
ways. I would like to glaze it over the whole area. And now I will take some of my purples. Um, I would say it is very diluted. I will take it same similar diluted as the green layer and go around. You see, it creates this natural tulip, fresh tulips bud feeling. And of course, you could not necessarily go just around. You could use the bigger area of your um, of your detail. Wash your brush, dry your brush with a paper towel, and go a little bit along the border between and soften when necessary with the edges. Maybe correct a little bit. Maybe I want to move it a little bit on the top and distribute things softly. This is actually could be a nice idea, also the nice technique for painting Easter eggs. I just thought about this, not only flowers, but many other things. The fourth option I want to share with you, it's also about layering, but more about adding details. Um, for example, veins on the flower or on the petal or some other details if you are not so much focused on flowers as me. Um, flatten your brush. Um, dip your brush in some watercolor, in some in some paints. Still um, keep it fluffy. Remove some of the excess water. You could even go right into your palette. So that should be very dry. You could make a few strokes on your paper towel. And then just go, for example, from bottom to top bottom to top and create some layering of very fine lines some details uh, once you train this skill of painting with very dry and fluffy brush on uh, another layer you can paint, for example, fur for animals, hairs, if you paint in portraits. So it's very, very useful technique to master on. So I imagine this is a tulip, um, tulip petal. Usually it has vines going from the middle veins, from middle vein to the, the side. That's now let's really put this into practice and paint some floral picture with a lot of layering around. So I have very watery colors of everything and I start to create my flowers. I promise you I have no idea how it will turn at the very end. So let's be open to some experiments. Uh, to speed up the process with layering, I always recommend you to paint firstly petals which are not overlapping. For example, I imagine this flower, don't know what this flower could be, I imagine it will be the side view of this flower. Now let's, let's have fun and use a lot of different colors, for example, some orange. Mm. And try to paint some, something a little bit different. Maybe the top view. Uh, painting petals. For painting petals, I just paint some occasional 
um, oval looking shapes. Um, I don't have any special, any certain flowers in mind. I just want to show you how to train your hand and train your layering skills. So firstly, you just really cover randomly um, the whole paper. Um, if, for example, you are not that so much into flowers, it's totally okay. <laughs> but uh, you could cover in the same way your paper, just with some shapes, for example, also overlooking shapes, but super random. And then you will apply more and more layers. You will get some kind of gemstone feeling, which is also... I think very, very cool. Let's make something different. Don't overthink it. Some pretty random shapes. The only thing I am thinking it's about a little bit of color distribution. Um, and when you painting in layers, remember to dilute your paints pretty a lot. Um, when I paint in my transparent technique, in the other classes, I start even lighter than you see here, uh, but for drilling it's, it's enough, it's totally enough. Let's see what, how we will finish, how we will play this around. This purple actually has some granulation in it. You see it um, uh, move aside some watercolor particles, which sometimes can be cool, sometimes not. That might be some mud. Let's keep it like this. Now, Let's dry this all. Everything is dry now. Let's have some fun and paint the second layer. Uh, for this one, I will paint just overlapping, just overlapping. Even doing this, same color, almost same shapes of the petals, just overlapping them you will get beautiful, beautiful results, very beautiful, unique flowers in the transparent see-through technique, which I love a lot, and I hope you will do too. In uh, my upcoming book, my upcoming book will be all about this layering, transparent technique and painting flowers, uh, a little bit more of complicated um, projects, but once you mastering these drills, you can paint every, every, each and every flower. So now let's keep it all dry. Uh, this flower, I'm thinking I would like to layer it with another color. I use purple, I'm taking another purple. I guess this is quinacridone purple. I, I am almost sure this is quinacridone purple, relatively mm, tr uh, transparent, diluted. And I paint second layer of petals on the top of the orange ones. It's very important to make sure that your paper with the previous layer is completely dry. Also, this technique works better on thicker paper. I would say start from 200 grams, not less. And you could remove, you can remove a little bit. Um, I see some puddles are happening here. To remove puddles, you try your brush. 
and use it like a sponge to remove excess water. Try not to overlap the petals. And bring some variety into their shapes. Could be a lot of fun of testing, creating. For example, the petals area is still wet here. So I would like, I just get some drop of really bold purple and just touch the very, very bottom of the flowers, of the, this upper layer petals, like this, and then I let it all <laughs> work itself. Let's um, train gradient skills, painting gradient skills on this one. Um, I'm watering, so to make it more visible, I use super diluted purple, so I'm watering the area of future petals. It's a um, relatively small petal, so I could make all three in one go. And now I go around the bottom area with much bolder, with much bolder um, color. And then I wash my brush, I remove water with a paper towel, and I actually like how, how it distributed uh, by itself, but it can always help a little bit. For example, in a little bit stretch the gradient from bottom to the top. Don't forget to clean your brush. It will make your painting much crispier, nicer. About this. Very lovely. Next one. I imagine this uh, petal looking a little bit down. And what we can try to do this, I suggest just uh, making another layer. With the same color and I will show you how to add a gradient of the other color into this. You're already guessing probably it will be pretty much the same. I imagine it could start with a little bit of red. With the tip of the brush I add just small touch into the bottom of the petals. In many cases I trust my watercolor and let it does the job like this. Not not so much interfering, but always it's always nice to know that you can control things that makes you more confident, right? So you could, with your clean, dry brush, you could help and distribute a little bit the colors. Let's add orange color here. A little bit different. A little bit different shape, um, shapes of petals. Same, same technique. I guarantee you, once you fill in one piece of paper with flowers like this, you will get much better feeling of your paper, of your paints, and of this layering technique. It's super important once you are confident. You could start painting really big beautiful projects. It's 
something more like a bump. Now let's check if all is dry now. Um, I think we totally can add third layer for this one. It'll be more like rose. It's getting look like a rose. Try to avoid um, the petals, these areas, um, touch each other. So don't put one um, on the other. Always make some overlapping. Remove petals. You can add as many layers as your paper allows you. So the better quality of paper you have, the more your hands are free for experiments. Let's add a little bit of darkness here. With this one, with this guy, let's see how it will work if we lay it out with small orange details, very small and soft, almost transparent, but each and every layer adds a volume, some fluffiness to the flower, some intricate details. Right here, I would like to add I, I would like to start thinking about greenery. So I use some olive green, super diluted, and I use it for, as another layer. Same shapes, same everything as we did with petals, just with green. I'm afraid this paper wasn't really dry yet, so that causes some, mm, some too much of mixing with the previous layer, but that's also it's something new. I could even start to paint some stem around, like this. So that's why it's really crucial to check out if the paper is dry enough. Um, here I, I think it's nice to add just one frontal petal about this shape. I um, use my brush very carefully. I don't press too much on the paper because that could damage the previous layers. So this is our last layer for this flower. We can emphasize a little bit. Um, here I would suggest to with some actually I think I would like to add a little bit of purple random purple you see I always try to overlap layers that increases the beauty of the technique. Now, while everything is still wet, I will connect, I will start to think about stems. I think it's nice when the green color of stem will mix a bit with the next, with the layers. Here, it is um, dry already. Let's give it a green layering. Green layering. 
just like this a lot of overlapping and some stem goes in that direction now let's maybe connect all the composition some stems Very, uh, as it is super abstract painting, don't stress out too much. And of course, why not to train, to keep training with leaves. I use olive green to paint leaves. Usually for painting leaves, in this case, for this drilling, use just a simple shape you one brush stroke another brush stroke nothing special remember our goal is to train hand is to train really uh, is to <laughs> is to train layering skills so you can paint amazingly beautiful charming special flowers very very super diluted i will leave it like this and dry it all again Now let's go more into details. For example, for this flower, imagine this is a rose. I could add a little bit of cent center um, falling area. Just with the tip of the brush, I paint with bold color a little bit of inside idea of inside structure. Um, you can add many many more layers around here as much as your paper allows you for this flower i would like to paint the center of the flower a little bit different just with random dots see how it all connected everything lovely i'm thinking of adding it's difficult to stop once you know in, in the process, very difficult to stop, to create things. Um, with this flower, with this big guy, I'm thinking that I can paint pretty obvious pistil area, for example, and a few stamens. It's imaginary flowers, no need to be stressed if that's um, real or not. For, for more realistic flowers, um, check out my other videos on transparency. We just um, mastering layering details. We are still layering, but now we are more into details. For this flower, let's train the dry brush strokes. Try your brush. Sometimes it helps just to grab color from, from the box. Like this. And add some texture to each and every flower. No need to cover all the petal few touches will give the idea of very nice um, uh, veins <laughs> of very delicate veins just in one brush stroke so beautiful 
Uh, same here, but I would like to make very it very contrasty. So I go for purple. Always remove, always test on your mm, paper towel. And remember, we are not creating an artwork here. We are training ourselves. See, it's a little bit too wet. I remove more. Still beautiful, but a little bit different idea behind. Super special. Super special look. I would like to add a touch of mm, brush strokes into this flower. This is actually is pretty good, just the very middle. I think we are getting to something beautiful, right? Even if it's supposed to be a drill. Honestly, I hate dr just drills because of drills when you have to paint a lot of <laughs> a lot of useless things on paper um i always try to put all the drills into something pleasant and into something more with a bit of a sense in it so now let's just do pretty similar way a little bit more of uh, greenery of course you can Go with different shade of greenery, the same as we painted flowers. It's um, such meditative process. That's why I like very much this technique it's very relaxing you usually not stress too much when you have to paint immediately like in bed in bed it's a little bit the opposite you have to wait until it is dry and it's you can experiment with colors with layering for example a little bit of different shades Combining dry brush strokes with wet brush strokes. I hope at, <laughs> at the end of the video I will convince you how beautiful this technique is. And I would be happy if I can inspire some of you to try to paint immediately something, something like this. Surely we can add more and more details to the um, leaves as well. For example, middle veins with dry brush, similar, very similar as we did with flowers. Sometimes it's, we can emphasize the tops, tips, add some borders, details, and it's sometimes it's very important to stop at a certain moment. Thank you so much for painting with me. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope it was helpful to master your layering technique, which can be applicable for so many different paintings. I'm looking forward for your feedback. What would you like to paint next? I read each and every comment of you. So much thankful again and see you next time. Bye bye.